Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Combat Corner, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont, and I've got Howard H.D. Davis. He is gracing us today. He has a big fight scheduled next Friday yes, at sir. the Hard Rock Live in Hollywood, Florida, BKFC 66. Yes, sir. If you haven't gotten tickets yet, I know Howard probably has tickets to sell you. Correct? I do. I do. Unless, I unless, do. You, sold, unless you sold them out already. <laughs> Not yet. I'm the co-main event, so they should be sold out. So I need the support from Fort Lauderdale, you know, the whole Broad County, Miami, Tampa, whoever you at, Orlando, come down, man. I'm going to put on the show. Definitely, definitely. So, you know, thank you, Howard, for jumping on with us. No yeah, we, 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 we've seen you. We've seen you fight before. I saw you fight in, at the Dolphin Mall. That was yeah. a different type of fighting experience. I mean, that was a small ring. Yeah. I mean, you're 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 what six foot two? Yeah, six foot two, six foot. I mean, one. could you reach the man across the ring from the other side? Pretty much. <laughs> uh, kinda. It was hard. It was a adjustment because usually I fight in the BKFC ring and it's bigger than that. So that was my first mm-hmm. time doing that type of event. Yeah, it was something new they was trying. So, mm. you know, it took some getting used to, and I didn't get to, like, go in the ring and try it out beforehand. So mm. um, it was definitely a little, like, a little um, – I was a little claustrophobic, to be honest. And um, my boxing gym ring isn't that small either. So it's like – it was, like, almost in the phone booth type of thing. And that's to his advantage because it was a, a shorter dude who throws, shorter uh, you know, overhands and stuff like that. He actually yeah. caught me with overhand, and I just, I just ate it. And he thought – his overhand was gonna hurt me, but like, nah. <laughs> was that was that the one that cut you? Because I know you got yeah, cut in there, right? Yeah, yeah. But okay. I needed that because like, it's like I was in there and I was just just so just boxing, boxing, jab, jab, move, and he hit me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, that's nothing. I can take it. You know, let's keep going. Let's keep mm-hmm. going. Pause, pause. You know that that started kind of wicked. But yeah. listen, <laughs> and after that, I turned it up. You know. Got the got the stoppage and um, this fight is going to be a hundred percent better. So looking at this fight right now, you're fighting a guy who's your height, yeah. your reach. Yeah. You've not fought anyone of that nope. height, that reach. Nope. So this is a different type of matchup, I'd say, yeah. because you can't, you don't have the reach advantage, you don't have the height advantage. Like these guys that you fought with, something five seven, five eight, five nine, whatever. Yeah. How do you approach a fight like this against this guy, James Brown, who's ranked fourth, who's 3-0? and I don't think he's fought the caliber of fighter that you have fought in, that you've yeah. fought so far. I mean, definitely hasn't fought a guy like uh, Kai Stewart, who you fought for the title. Yeah. Um, talk about that that type of difference from fighting these shorter guys to where you're fighting a guy your height, and what do you, what do you see from that? People got to understand with fighting, it's not about size and length and all that stuff every single time. You have shorter dudes that – are unstoppable that are, that are great footwork power like you have to work your advantages to your advantage me always fighting shorter people isn't always an advantage to me especially if they know how to fight it's kind of hard to punch down on people sometimes that messes up my accuracy that messes up my power because i'm used to sparring taller guys people my height i don't you know i fight in my weight class and usually boxing in my weight class there are some tall people you know i spar outside of my weight class so the fact that i get to fight somebody my height and actually box at my height, throw my punches at my height. Somebody that has length, like people I spar, the people I set up beautiful counters with and stuff like that. Like it's amazing because it's like, as you said, I'm always fighting shorter guys. I always getting into the scuffles and the pressure. But this guy, man, can go tit for tat, and it's not mm-hmm. gonna be too much tit for tat. It's gonna be a lot of tap, 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 and it's gonna be me tapping him. Pause. That was wicked. But listen, it's going to be me punching him. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's going to be me punching him. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, man, um, I'm, I'm happy. I'm excited. I've been getting great sparring. Um, to be honest, I'm going to have the same advantages. I'm a boxer. He's not a predominantly boxer. He's an MMA guy, I think. Mm-hmm. He squares up a lot. Um, he's a southpaw, but I spar southpaws. I actually fight in both stances. So, it's to be honest... I feel like I got the advantage because of how I train, my mindset, my my training regiment, my coach, 
all in my team behind me, you know, God, everything. I'm chosen, and I feel like I'm going to get this win, and I'm going to keep going. I'm going to fight Kyle. I'm going to get that win. I'm going to get that belt. I'm going to go up to 155, stay there, get that belt, and maybe go to 165. Really? That's how I feel. Okay. That's how I yeah, feel. I mean, yeah, because 6'2", I mean, I'm sure you, you walk around probably, what, 175 or something like that, 170? Nope. <laughs> barely, barely, barely 160, man. I stand really? Oh, you don't I even got... you don't you don't really have to cut any weight. No, for this fight, and that's why it's perfect because 145 uh-huh. is when I cut the weight, and that's why you see I kind of you see it a little bit. I've gotten better with the weight management and my power and my speed at that weight. But if you want to look at box rec mm-hmm. and look at me like my record at um 155 mm-hmm. pro boxing and. BKFC, like my actual professional fights, not yeah. like TCL and like the little one round thing. Like I'm five yeah. and zero with five knockouts, hundred percent finish rate at one fifty five. So, okay, he chose to accept that contract. He could have easily rejected it and made us fight at one forty five. Maybe that would have been to his advantage. But one fifty five is really my stumping ground. So, you're going to are, see, you know, <laughs> are you going to fight? Are you going to fight more at one fifty five going forward, or are you going to you 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 want to get back with uh you want to get back at some point with Kai Stewart? I definitely want to get I know back you can't talk it. you can't look ahead, but yeah, 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 yeah. I, but I, I definitely want to get back at Kyle Stewart. This is just a different weight class, as I said. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I'm ranked number um three at featherweight yeah. and I'm ranked number five at lightweight. So I'm ranking in both mm-hmm. weight classes. Yeah. So the doors open either or I can mm-hmm. get a title shot at one fifty five and come out of nowhere. I can get a title eliminator at one fifty five and come out of nowhere. Whatever comes first. You know, I'm not forcing it, I'm not looking past James Brown. He's my target right now, he has to go to bed first. Pause. Then, <laughs> then whoever else next is whoever else next. I w- I watched a few of his. I watched his fights and I, and I saw his style. I mean, I'm sure you watched film on him and seen yeah. him fight. Yeah. You don't want to give away any strategic nah. ideas, but looking at nah. him fight, he seems like he's a little bit upright to me. Nah. Doesn't have the. Doesn't have that movement. <laughs> he you told me. He told me like a few. Of, a few fighters before me that has been that have been stopped that he's gonna pressure me, that he that that I don't like pressure. Okay, buddy. <laughs> I mean that okay. dude Sean Wilson put that Sean Wilson put some pressure. I thought. Yeah, and you see what happened to him. But yeah. hey, hey, okay. Same thing happened I mean, with um Trevor Morris said that mm-hmm. he seen the Louis fight. I don't like pressure. I'm like, did you see the Louis fight? Because I was the one who was coming forward against Louis. That's how I got mm-hmm. cut. I was being over aggressive. I, mm-hmm. I ran into a shot, so yeah, uh, you know it's it's okay. I guess people don't know how to break down fights and they think you know one little se- sequence or you know what a person says just because they won a fight on a dot mm-hmm. on, on a cut that yeah. um that's the the remedy to beat me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, yeah. So his name is James Brown. Are you gonna come out to a James Brown song? <laughs> oh no, but he definitely he definitely will get down in that ring. He gonna get uh-huh. down like James Brown. He gonna dance. <laughs> but I come out of James Brown. I ain't gonna disrespect the legend because he has his name. Doesn't mean anything, you know. Hey, kudos to him for accepting the fight and not just being all talk, though. You know, he got an undefeated record. He fought some dudes. He fought an ex boxing dude. I remember older dude. You know, he put work on him, but the dude wasn't. You know, it like a like a check type of fight. Like he mm-hmm. came for the paycheck, but mm-hmm. he gonna see the difference between. The people he fought and then coming in there with me and thinking that I'm the same as those guys. No disrespect to them, but I'm a whole different animal. I mean, you remember, I don't know if you ever saw the fight. I mean, you're, you're, I'm 46 years old, so you're a lot younger than I am. But when yeah. um, Floyd Mayweather fought Oscar De La Hoya, he comes out in a, I think he came out in a sombrero. Oh, and yeah. I, so, like, nah, I was about to ask about the James Brown thing. Like, he had, hey, the, um, the, he had like the, um, he the had sombrero. Like the, the hat. He had a sombrero. <laughs> Actually, I'm, you know, it's crazy. Just because that's TBE, I'm going to do that when I fight, a, you know, my next probably two fights. Whenever I fight, a, like, a, you know, somebody from a Spanish heritage, Mexican, Puerto Rican, I'm going to come out, you know, drip out in there. Because, like, one of my favorite boxers um, to this day, Jamal Davis, he did the same thing as Floyd. He came out with the sombrero and the Mexican colors. Like, I like that's dope. I don't feel like it's, um, I don't feel like it's disrespectful, you know. It's fair game. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, I don't know if you know, but, uh, you know, you you got you fight Friday on Saturday. They got Canelo fighting in Vegas. Of course, I and know. then they I have at, at the Canelo same day. and they and then the same night you got the UFC, UFC fight. Got Med, UFC. no Noche, whatever. Bu- <laughs> you know the the Mex- like they made it a Mexican night 
So, I mean, you could come out in a sombrero on Friday yeah. if you really want oh, to. Oh, no. It's like a Mexican nah, thing nah, going I'm not going to do that. <laughs> now, like, it, would go, it would go crazy because um that's Canelo Knight. I don't know why yeah. they're trying to compete with him anyway. Yeah, they're not doing too good with that. Mm-hmm. But um now my outfit is going to be a tribute to something special to me and okay. um, special people to me and um an organization that is my favorite and just so you let me ask you. let me you. ask you I saw some video where Shaq was sponsoring you <laughs> how did that relationship come I mean what that's is, my how, guy that's how did you meet guy. Shaq randomly I can't really? I, everybody always asked me I, God one day I was on Instagram and like really the Lakers is my all time favorite basketball team. I only like basketball because of the Lakers and Kobe uh-huh. and Shaq. So okay. I just was making reels, man. And um I tagged him in a reel. And he coming back like in my DM and I'm like, oh, wow. Did Shaq, did Shaq just reply to me? And he like as it, it was a shot. I think I knocked the dude my piece out. I knocked the dude out. He's like, everybody said he started um twerking. When was this? So, how, how long ago? This was, was this? like this was last year. So okay, he's seen it. Okay. He's seen it. And he was like, damn. And I'm like, oh. so I'm like, this man really just, and you know what I mean? Like, I don't care what anybody say. Like, I'm fanned out. I'm over there like, it's Shaq. It's Shaq. Cause like my grandma, like when her yeah. favorite players, when he, when he played for the Heat and Shaq and Dwayne Wade. So I'm, grandma, uh-huh. you know, Shaq did that. <laughs> so we start talking, yo. And like, I'm not the type of person that thinks, money and opportunity or how to, you know, people like, quote unquote, use people. A lot of them use, but just like ask people yeah. for things off rip. Like, I was just talking to him, tagging him in reels for months. Like, he always coming back, like, you know, good job, da 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 And then one day I, I just, I was just speaking to him, like, you know, hey, big guy, if you could, you know, I, I, I need some sponsors for my next fight. If you could just put my name in some rooms and send it out to some people that you know. I didn't ask him directly yeah. for sponsorship. And when I asked him that, he was like, oh, how much is the sponsor? Da, 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 da. And, like, before even talking to my team or doing anything or trying to get some big sponsorship, whatever I had at that time, I sent him. And he was like, you know, I'm going to sponsor you. Da, da, da. And I'm like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm geek, bro. I'm like, Yo, this is one of the all-time greatest basketball players ever. Like, one of the kindest, humble human beings that I've had the experience to meet and seeing him do great works for people that are in need and just giving people a chance, you know, and it's like, he just, he, you know, he showed that and it was like, damn, you um, know, man, shout out to Shaq, man. Great, great, great guy, man. I, I've always great wished guy. that I'd be at a Walmart when he walked into Walmart. Oh, yeah. Because every time you see these things where, like, you see the fan, like the one I saw where he bought a family with eight, like a truck. Um, yeah, that's the computers. Cool, that's I mean, real, does bro. all those things. I mean, like, those are blessings for people, and he just True. go and he happens to be there at the right time. And True. it's like, I got you. Like I, that's that's except for Charles True. Barkley, who just wants to beat him up, you know. Man, and, him and Charles, uh, cool. cool. no, him and Charles I, probably like best friends. No, of course, you know them playing around, you know. Yeah, because he, he he likes to bully Charles on TNT. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna go punch you in your face or something. These guys want to wrestle. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You're too old, man. You're gonna get someone's gonna get hurt out there, and. Man, Especially you know, Charles, that just friends, that just yeah. friends the old time. You know they, they competed against each other at a high level. Of course, so you know how that go. But I know when I was a kid, and then like a friend of mine, we want to play around, and then if we play around now, someone might end up like broken. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I mean I have friends my age, yeah. like 29, 28, 20, mm-hmm. 30. They, like my cousin and my friend like wrestle all the time. And I just yeah. don't know why. They just want to test and see like if they still got it. They don't ever go past it. Like, yeah. They always slam each other. It's just like I don't know. It just I don't know. Uh-huh. You just see one of them start working out. They like, I, I let me see if you're really getting strong. <laughs> so let's look at you. Let's talk about your background. How did you end up? I mean, I saw a video of you, like I mentioned to you earlier, uh, um, before we jumped on here about football at South Plantation Heights. I used to cover high school football, just so you yeah. know. I, oh, I, I, I wrote for the Miami Herald and Sun Sentinel. When did you go to oh, South Plantation? I went to South Plantation. Um, well, I graduated in 2013. That's when I graduated. That's after, because I remember I used to, I covered them. Rest in peace, Alex Collins, who Rest went in peace to South Plantation. My brother Buddha, yeah. man, played for the same football team when we went almost undefeated our our senior year. Um, so you were in the same team in high school. Yeah, me. Then me I co- then then I covered you at some point because I yeah. went to a bunch of games that Alex Collins played, yeah. in, and I, me, I must have seen you play. I, I started football late because of um fighting. I only mm-hmm. was able to play one year of football because I fought 
all my other years and I didn't have the GPA. When mm-hmm. I was going to um, play my junior year, I missed the GPA by like a point one something. Mm-hmm. I had like 1.9 something, and I was already starting at receiver and kept mm-hmm. return. And um, I was going to all these um, 707 camps. I went to a visit for um, FSU. Like I was – and people were talking about me. Like, I was the best receiver on the team, um, catching-wise and scoring touchdowns. Like, I had, I had um, number two. And um, I, I anyway. definitely saw you play because I saw Alex Collins play as a senior. Yeah, I, yeah. I covered games <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. No, nah, I mean, there was a lot of the games I scored touchdowns. And, you know, really I was a, a, a um, deep threat. Mm-hmm. Taking the top off the um the defense stuff like that, but um yeah I didn't um I didn't get to play football afterwards because the little scale thing where you got to get a high ACT or SAT because your GPA is low yeah, or you got to get D um D one eligible. I did a Spanish and Spanish two thing. I don't know if I spent uh, finished Spanish two because I think I like, got my test results back and it was like I couldn't go D one anyways. So I was about to go JUCO and pursue mm-hmm. my um dreams. A football, cause that's my first love is football. I always loved boxing growing up. I just ain't had the support to do it. My mom, I was already fighting. She wasn't gonna put me in the sport, so I could fight better. <laughs> so I could do, do more. so um, I kind of you were fighting where you were fighting where you shouldn't be fighting, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's like um, yeah, I start um, oh yeah, I was gonna go JUCO, but I had my first son. And the baby. And, um, yeah. I grew up with no father. I had no mm-hmm. type of real male figure in my life, so. It was like go to college and you know your son's about to get born and he's not gonna. I said I got to throw that dream away. I went to work in multiple jobs to provide for my son and I've been in all my kids' life from day one. With with, with the BK with BKFC, I see in between you you take on boxing matches also. Yeah. These team these team events, correct? Oh yeah, I was in the TCL. Yeah, that was. How, that was cool. how, how did you get into that? Is that just to keep yourself active and and, and keeping going between BKFC fights? Because I think BKFC clearly is your is your yeah is your thing. It, it, it it was honestly, but it was also for the experience. I had one boxing match like two years ago, maybe three, mm-hmm. and um, it was a great experience. Like I got into this <clears throat> sport to do boxing. It wasn't bare knuckle. Bare knuckle became a lane that opened up that could propel me to newer heights and give me opportunities. And I just so happened to be very good at it because I'd done it my whole life in the street, mm-hmm. <laughs> fighting, and schools fighting. You might as well get paid fighting. for it. Might as well get paid for it. I've said that a million times before. You know, I was doing it for free. Mm-hmm. Hurt my hands, fighting dudes three times bigger than me, 10 years older than me. Like, I'm not going to be scared to fight somebody in my weight class, my almost mm-hmm. age, younger, older. Like, you know, it's, it's no fear about that because I've done it so many times. But um, the TCL thing with the boxing, it was a great experience. I ended up knowing one of the coaches from the Miami team, mm-hmm. and he got me in. I was supposed to be on the next season of it, but they got me in on the season – that they had this year, and it was great because I got to fight all undefeated boxers um, in that league or outside of the league. Like, they were professional records. And um, I fought some really good dudes, and, like, you can't, like, buy certain experiences. Like, yeah. the things I learned and how focused it got me and showed me where I need to go and how better I need to get, that was, like, that was great, man. Like, mm-hmm. um, I, I won some matches that I felt I won and people know I won and I got bucked out of them because we fought in, like, their state. <laughs> but mm-hmm. um, the judges are kind of, like, biased. But um, I, it was a great experience overall. And that's why I feel like I have a big advantage coming into this fight because I sparred nothing but undefeated pro boxers. I mm-hmm. just sparred Bryce Baba Yeager Henry yesterday. And if you haven't seen his last boxing match, he does not do that with a body shot. He's Undefeated mm-hmm. in Boston, he's undefeated in um, bare knuckle. He's eleven and oh, with probably like, is it is it maybe all knockouts? Maybe ten knockouts, nine knockouts, mm-hmm. and he's taller than James Brown. He has oh wow better length than James. I mean, but longer reach than James yeah. Brown. And his boxing and defense. If you see this kid, you will know his levels. So if me yeah. and him going at it and sparring, and we've been I've been sparring for like. Since I've been in boxing, I met him when he was shorter than me. He's taller than me now. But me and him been going at it, and we help mm-hmm. each other out, train for um, train and prepare for each other fights. And he's been a big help, man, you know, because he can fight in Southpaw. He can fight in Orton else, but just the reach, the the fighting a taller opponent, him being so, like you said, James Brown, his movement, how he moves, it's nothing like Bryce's. So that's mm-hmm. why I feel like I have a clear advantage. Hey, he may have somebody on his side that can mimic my style, but I doubt it. I'm a very mm-hmm. different fighter. 
explosive power, speed, defense. If you see me fight at my best, you see me, you come catch a sparring session, and I'm serious and I'm not tired from overtraining myself or doing multiple mm-hmm. training sessions, like, you will see me, man. Like I said, I literally sparred 12 rounds, three different oh, wow. people. Yeah, man, I'm, wow. I'm in shape, conditioning-wise. Punch is going to be super, super crazy fast mm-hmm. and powerful. And, hey, man, he just – he better prepare himself, you know, because that talking is, is only good for so long. You can't bully everybody. You know, now you got somebody your height, your timing. So, so Conor play. McGregor is now a part owner of the BKFC. Have you had yeah. a chance to meet him or message no. him? Or what do you think that does for the BKFC and growing this sport? It definitely takes BKFC to another – Level it gives it some um, credibility because Conor is obviously Conor McGregor. That's the mm-hmm. Mac man. That's 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 one of the ones you know. Regardless mm-hmm. of his last few fights and stuff outside of the um, fighting game, he's paved the way. He sh- showed that you can come from nothing. You know, he, he's beat world champions in great fashion. He's fought one of the greatest boxers ever to a lot of people, the greatest ever, and. You just like I said, you give you give the company credibility, um, credibility because um you have somebody like that backing BKFC. Mm-hmm. It's not just a, some small time. This is a a literal like icon. If you want yeah. to be real, like in the yeah. world, he's known everywhere. He's respected yeah. everywhere, you know. So it's big. I haven't had a chance to talk to him directly, or I don't know if he's seen me fight or not seen me fight, anything like that. But it'll be a pleasure to you know meet him one day. Even if I got the chance to spar him, I would love that. Like one thing about it, I love testing the waters and testing my own abilities against mm-hmm. people that are already you know there, so I can learn. You know, it's nothing cocky. It's not saying I'm better than him on his level. Like no, I want to learn. I want to see how it is to be in there with somebody that's achieved the things I want to achieve. So I've, I mean, I've known your management uh, team all, all in management. I've known Victor for a number of years. Yeah. What was that? I mean, how did you how did you meet them? How did you come you know connect with those guys? And what have they meant for what your 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 career so far? Because I mean, I see all the videos they produce. I mean, I I know Victor; he's a great great guy. Yeah. Um, and really loves combat <laughs> sports. Oh yeah. <laughs> and he, I mean, he started a. I mean, he's involved now with you know, in, in this uh, a local MMA thing, which double is down. I'll, I'll, I'll be at next month, and yeah, double and down. of course, double down. I'm gonna be at you know your fight next week. Uh, Appreciate it. To, to I'll be there. Um, but talk about how he he has because I mean he's were you the first guy he signed? I was the first BKFC fighter, I believe. It happened through a sponsor I had who had a friend that was um connected to Victor and um the management team. And I went to an outing with them. I think it was like Rolling Loud, and I just met the dude. Mm-hmm. And then I met Vic them, and it was just um, it was love. It was great energy, like you say. He's a great guy. He's straightforward. He's a you know, he's about business, but he's you know, he's about family and like respect with his coworkers and even the you know, like because you know he's a lawyer. He has a yeah. um, the um, the the attorney like firm. And, like, all his coworkers love him. Like, he's big on energy and just made his energy match. And, like, we just, boom. It was like, you know, you want to go to the next level. I can do this for you. I told him what I can do for him. I can win these fights. I can, you know, and it just it just made sense. You know, I had other – I had a few other um, management people trying to reach out and sign me. I still have people trying to sign me. And I'm like, now nah, where I'm at is good. You know, where I'm at feels like home. Um, home. Mm-hmm. And, um – Victor has just been great. His family has been great. Everybody that's a part of the All In Management team has been great. Like I said, it's like a it's like a family thing. So mm-hmm. Victor being big into sports and telling me about his upbringing with his dad, um, teaching him boxing and him doing his own thing, like participating in MMA and stuff like that. Like he's not just a person that just it's just business. Like he's really invested in the craft, and that's why um it's big to me, and that's why I really like like that I'm with All In because even I'm like. <laughs> one aim in the morning, I can't sleep. Here come Vic sending me a boxing reel, like trying to teach me something or trying to add something to my arsenal. And like, that's real. That's like, you yeah. up, you just seen it. He like, you know, I can see you doing this to this person. I can see you doing this to that. But I'm like, yeah, I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> and we'll just be talking, you know. So I, even when I fight, he's, he's my manager, but I have Vic in my corner, you know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think Victor sleeps. 
<laughs> I, I don't think Victor sleeps because he's everywhere. I mean, it, it's remarkable to me. I mean, I'm I'm yeah. older than him, but I admire him a great deal and all that he's done in, in, in yeah. such a young age. I, I, on top of that, I don't, you know, it, it it's one of those things where he has a lot of guys now under his under the management company. Yeah. yeah, there's always that possibility, and I know all you guys know each other at this point. <laughs> what is that? Po- I mean, that when that poss- that that possibility comes of potentially fighting one of these guys that you all know yeah. how do you approach how, i mean I, I don't think you've had i don't know if you've had to do that yet but uh, or not you haven't had to do that yet but if you ever had to do that i mean what how do you how do you feel about stuff like that because you know dana white in the ufc always says <laughs> this is your business like you're your fighter you you can't worry about xyz like yeah. teammates mm, yeah. yeah up until it ain't really point. it ain't really like a teammate thing <laughs> yeah. about fighting in sports you know sugar was signed by the same management but obviously yeah the management usually don't try to promote fights against unless you know, it's the title fight. Yeah, yeah, unless it's like you know they don't try to promote in-house fighting. But um, mm-hmm. um, I don't have a problem with it. You know me, if it's to provide for my family and you're trying to provide for your family and it's an opportunity you work towards and I work towards and we end up meeting that across roads at the top, and then you know we got to fight. It's no mm-hmm. hard feelings. It's like I hate you and that I like. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm coming to stop you. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm coming to fight you. But it's not like. After that, like, it's going to be nothing but love and respect we got in there because, like, even my opponents that I fought, I always show respect to them, man, you know, because what we do isn't something that's an easy task. It isn't something that you can be, um, like, I don't know. You, you can't be a regular person to do what we do. <laughs> like, you got to have courage. You got to have bravery. You got to, you got to really, like, not even have something wrong with you in a bad way, but, like, have something wrong with you, but in a good way. Oh, <laughs> you know, of course. It's like, it, it takes something totally different. So it's all respect and love. Like, if I was to fight somebody inside the management team that somebody wanted our people, the fans, or the company wanted me to fight, and they was cool with it, and the management was cool with it, oh, let's go, you know? At the end of the day, you know, all paths that we're on as fighters are all the same, especially when yeah. you're in the same weight class. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, if it happens, it happens. You know, friends fight all the time. You know, it's funny because you mentioned, you know, just in terms of, sparring and stuff like that and you have to have a slightly maybe a little bit of a a little different in thought process in a good way i mean when i was in better shape i i would spar with my trainer who was an amateur <laughs> boxer and he was six three i'm five ten oh, okay and and he and i wore headgear i i after the after i after he I guess he he boxed at a high a higher a high amateur level and yeah. he hit me in the head one time I was like, bro, I gotta put some headgear on because I actually have a, I have a full time job, and I had a headache for three days. Yeah, that but, is but, you know, I put the headgear on, and I mean, I would eat a lot of shots because first he was trying to get me help me get in shape. Yeah, and he wasn't cracking me to the level he could crack. I yeah. know that for sure. He was um, working with you. He was working. He was with working you. with me. You know what I mean? So, but when he cracked me though, he cracked me one time because when I I cracked him one good time, he's like, man. Fuck this shit. <laughs> and he got and he hit me. I'm like, All right, man. I gotta take Boom. a break for about a week. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, it was like that. I didn't go down. I I must say I didn't go down because he's like about 235 pounds. I'm about at the time I was probably about 250, but yeah. he's mu- muscular 235, and I'm a more blubbery 230, 250. Oh, okay, I get it. I get <laughs> so, it. <laughs> you know, um, but no, I I mean watching watch you you can't walk out of a ring. Or a cage and not respect, no matter what you said before. In my opinion, I mean, unless you're Connor and Khabib, <laughs> you can't walk out of a ring and not respect your opponent. Yeah, they you took guys it a little far. Though. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah. I said Connor and Khabib kind of took it a little far. Yeah, he was trying talking Connor while he was beating on them inside the ring. <laughs> it was, it was, it was real. Yeah, I mean, he threw a he threw a, a a dolly through the the bus window in in, in New York. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then so. he, and then he talked about his religion, which they're very big on. So. Yeah, they're big on that. You can't do yeah, that. So. You definitely can't. can't. And that, that honor thing for you know the Dagestani guys is like mm-hmm. way it's up. Big. Big. Tell me how you're gonna finish this fight. <laughs> What's the prediction for? There I mean, is, is this no gonna, is this going to go around? Is this going to go? No, there is no prediction. No. You have to nope. find out uh-huh. on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. So get okay. a ticket, <laughs> everyone, <laughs> folks. Get a ticket, man. 
Howard H.D. Davis is with us today on Combat Corner. He has tickets. Is there a way they can reach you to buy tickets directly from you? Because I know that's part of how y'all. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I know that's how y'all part of how y'all are compensated. Yes. So, yes, yes. you know, buy a ticket directly from Howard. Uh, how did how do they reach you through my Instagram is nhhd876. You can reach me. I give you all the information about what tickets I have, how you can get them. If you need the more expensive tickets, I can get them ordered. Please come out. I've trained hard. I've done everything. I'm in that. At shape right now. I'm on that timing. You don't want to miss this. Trust me. All right, folks. That will all be in the description of this video. Uh, Howard's Instagram. So do reach out to Howard. Get these tickets. The fights are next Friday. It's BKFC 66 at the Hollywood Hard Rock. I mean, I think we just did. We just see a fight between a couple of UFC fighters at the Hard Rock. PFL, I think. Yeah, it was a PFL there, thing. We saw them fighting in the middle of the casino. Uh, oh, Mar I didn't Marvin see it, but Vittori I heard about it. Marvin Vittori and Brandon Allen are going at it in the casino. Yeah, I, I heard mean, about it. Hard Rock is a great place to be. Um, is there a before we go? Is there a place that you haven't fought that you would love to fight in? Because I saw that Sturgis card, that was different in mm -hmm. South Dakota yeah. during a motorcycle rally. That, that was looks something crazy. different. I've never seen anything like that before. Um, place i mean one of the big boxing venues like um maybe like the mgm yeah or you know new york or um knuckle mania right uh i was supposed you to fight in knuckle mania but yeah definitely yeah uh, my opponent got he pulled out like the, the day before the fight he had oh, a, a eye condition and they i don't know oh, how man. they got past it and yeah i was supposed to fight on that card that chad mendes um debuted on mm -hmm. that on um, knuckle mania but yeah, a knuckle mania would be cool. I don't know where it would be. But um, I definitely don't want to fight in a place that's cold with high altitude and snows like how I fought in Utah. I wish <laughs> I would have fought that fight down here. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't want to fight nowhere there. But it would be dope to uh, fight overseas um, in the U.K. Okay. Um, you know, what is Bulgaria or whatever it's called. Then they yeah, had they had a fight in Bulgaria, team. right? They had a card yeah, in Bulgaria. They one, yeah, they had yeah. one there. They had one in Mexico. Like, it'd be cool to fight somewhere else, you know, mm -hmm. even though I ain't got my fans and my supporters and stuff like that. But it'd be dope experience to get some new fans and, you know, travel the world. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, everyone, this is Howard H.D. Davis. He is uh, fighting next Friday against James Brown. Not the singer, the fighter at the Hard Rock on September 13th. But he will be dancing. Get your tickets. Get your tickets now. Reach out to Howard. The description will his Instagram will be in the description. Howard, I thank you so much, man. I wish you all the best. Appreciate Go you, man. Get it, man. And thank you again. Got to. Hey. All right. God bless. God bless, bro. Yo. All right. Everyone, that was Howard H. D. Davis. I thank him very much and his management team all in management for setting this up for us. Big fight. Friday night, September 13th at the Hollywood Hard Rock Live Arena. Get your tickets. Reach out to Howard. He will have tickets for you. Again, that's how these guys are comped right now. I mean, they're putting their lives on the line in this in, in that ring. Bare knuckles like nothing else. If you haven't seen bare knuckle fighting, you got to check this out. It's not like MMA. It's not like it's not boxing. This is this could be over in 10 seconds. It's that serious. You haven't seen it, go check it out again. Thank you to Howard Davis. Thank you to all in management for setting this up with us. We appreciate you. September 13th, BKFC 66. Come on now.